Good morning everyone, this is Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today's video is bee themed farmhouse home decor DIYs. These four little cuties were a lot of fun to make, uh, but this video is a bit long. There's a lot of steps, there's a lot of there's a lot of info here, so let's get started. So here I have four uh I believe these are hexagons. They're not octagons, they're six or hexagons. I got these at Michael's uh, by the register, they're about a dollar each. And then this piece I'm was going to add to it, but just ignore that. So we've got the four hexagons here. We're going to take off all the hangers on the back and all of the uh, little rope hangers as well. It's a pretty soft wood, so there wasn't much difficulty pulling those out once you get the right tool for it. So uh, this first one I had to leave the staple in because I wasn't thinking smart, but uh, basically I grabbed both ends of that rope and it helped pull the staple out. So I got all the rest of the staples out. And the uh, stickers came off super easy. I mean, there was you know a little, just a little bit of heat shortly, and they just peeled right up. And then, of course, do that to all four of them. And then now I'm going to put them in the shape that I want them, because we're going to basically make this like a little honeycomb standing table display or a tabletop piece. Um, now, you can place this on the wall, make it into a sign, but I didn't. Uh, so all I'm going to do is before I paint anything, I'm going to use my regular tight bond wood glue and a little bit of hot wood glue. I am still using that horrible Sherbonder glue gun where it leaks all over. It says it's for standard size glue sticks, which I have those standard size hot glue or hot wood glue sticks. But man, does it feel like they just they don't fit. So you have to like really, really jam them in there. So I'm thinking maybe that's why it leaks. But in any event, I, I need to look for another glue gun for the hot wood glue, but it it does work very well. Um, it does work for many items, but it, it is very, very effective on wood, so very happy there. I still use regular wood glue, too, because we know that that's definitely going to give us a tight bond, uh, which is in the name, tight bond. <laughs> so I'm also going to use my staple gun here and make sure that I get all the seams. Now, I was checking to make sure that these staples didn't pop through, but... They are on a very thick part of the wood, so both of the borders around it, um, when you'll see in a second here, I'm just making sure I get all of the four, not four corners, but the corner pieces. And then if you see here, I'm gonna line up the seam with where my staple comes out. And I put a decent amount on the back of that. None of them pop through because we have a good thick border around each one of those little hexagons there. So that worked out okay. Now, the the staples obviously weren't going to keep it clamped very well, so I put my, my clamps on it and then left it for a few hours. Now here, I, I couldn't use antique wax because I'm going to put some, some rub-on transfers in here. So this is Americana Gel Stain in Walnut, not Walnut. Yeah, no, Walnut. That's my favorite color because it's a darker brown. So I kind of watered it down a little bit with water in the beginning. And then I just applied it to all, all the wood. So the insides, the red... You know the edges the inside edges the back and then I do eventually do the back of it but I won't do it now because I, I had planned on covering the whole back with craft paper but I did something a little different you'll see once we're done covering this with the gel stain so I put a lot of it on and then there were times you'll see periodically I will wipe it off with either a baby wipe or a paper towel uh, just to make sure that wood grain pops through it is really pretty once the wood grain pops through and I'll tell you right now, I do cover most of it, <laughs> but the parts that show are super pretty. So that's all that matters. It's like, you know, you start out with an idea. It's like, I want the wood grain to show, make it super pretty. And then you cover 90% of it with something else. <laughs> and mine is white chalk paint and other items. Basically, I made this like almost like a little, this is almost like four small pictures all in one. So that's why this one's got a decent amount of steps because two of the ideas I had to fill these things uh, were absolute failures guys so I love how the end result came out so we'll see how you guys feel about it but um, now that all that gel stains on and I've got it dried I am going to apply well that's a little uh, cop a little cup there with uh, white Waverly chalk paint in there and I'm gonna do the edges but then I'm also gonna put a little bit on the inside of each one now even that right there is cute by itself but I wanted to have more of a farmhouse flair to it, of course, because that's who I am now. Might as well just call me Crafty Farmhouse Thoughts and whatnots, because that's basically how obsessed I am lately. 
So I did horizontal and then now I'm also doing vertical because lately I've been really liking it. It almost looks like a canvas effect, but I'm liking how it how it is on the back. So here, here's what I was speaking about a little bit earlier. I'm taking, this is craft paper tape. It's a very nice thick adhesive uh, craft paper tape and it makes it in my opinion it looks almost like you know how you see on the back of custom framed pieces it gives it a more professional look but it also seals in those seams and that stuff isn't going to come loose that stuff is very sticky uh, so i'm also using a brayer to pop uh just to, to push it down and make sure we get a good um a good stick around all those staples and then also now i'm going to finish the back with the same gel stain uh, just to make it look nice just in case the back of it is showing now this again is supposed to be a it's a wall piece or a tabletop piece or a shelf sitter so you're going to lean it against something the back of it shouldn't show now should you have different plans for yours then i would suggest using craft paper across the whole back of it and then put a hanger on there some sort of maybe jute rope or twine and then glue it on and maybe a couple staples but in any event i was leaving mine on the shelf so i thought it was cute now this right here i got in the garden department at dollar tree i'm not sure what that is i was going to call it a coaster and then i'm using some scrap paper that i got at michael's many many years ago it's just a honeycomb design that i thought was super cute so um there's actually no need to do anything to the piece from dollar tree here this little i guess it's a garden stake or a little garden i don't know what it is a tag but it was in the garden section when i bought them um, so basically I used my Adtex uh, scrapbooking adhesive. It's a very strong adhesive and I'm going to cut out just enough. I don't want to waste too much of the paper since I don't have much. Um, I'm cutting out just enough to clear the sides of it. And then, um, of course we're going to save the rest. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to use my finger sander, which I love this technique. I'm going to use my finger sander and I have an 80 grit paper uh, sandpaper attached to it at the moment that 80 grit takes off so much I haven't changed it out for anything else so I love that 80 grit it's a super coarse one but look at how smooth those lines are like that isn't even really leaving that rough of an edge so in any event that's the plan for the first one here so we're going to take a Dollar Tree rub on transfer that I got here now this one I don't like this one so much it just it transfers okay, but I think it's just a different type of ink or a different type of transfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little, um, it's like a half wreath, little uh, leafy flowery thing with a little bumblebee in the middle. But I'm also going to cut out one of the honeycombs and then four of the small little bees. But we're only going to put the circle with the bee on it in the middle of the actual item here. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. What I didn't like about it here was the paper wasn't as though the paper wasn't thin, but it did curl up on me. Now, I'm using um, a, a burnish, not a burnishing, but I'm using a, a tool from a different pack of rub-on transfers I got on Amazon, which has a very wide flat end on it, and it was very easy to apply. It's just the way that this transfer goes down, it makes, it, it seems as though it's not working, honestly. It really feels like it's just kind of a little bit faded. But the item, it, you know, the transfer came out perfect. It's there. It's just... Eh, I would say I'm not unhappy, but they're not my favorite, so I probably won't be buying more of those. But um, still, it's super cute. So I don't want to leave it plain with just the transfer. I've got my junk bucket out. You guys see that top left? That's my junk bucket with my bows in it. And I had this little black twine bow and then a little piece of uh, buffalo check ribbon that was left over, like off of a spool of something. So I'm going to take my little twine bow that I had made a while back, and that's literally just wrapped around two fingers. And then I'm cutting off an extra piece of twine and I'm going to make a loop out of the buffalo check ribbon, put the twine on top of it, and then take that extra piece of twine and just tie it to uh, cinch it around the middle. I spread out the little extra loops a little bit on, on the black twine and then we are literally just going to, well, that was an idea, but we're gonna use that on a different little cubby hole. Um, we're just gonna glue that to the top and that one is the, I mean, first off, that's the sm that's the fastest and the easiest one of all four of these guys here. See how cute it is? It's very simple, but super cute. I love that scrapbook paper. It really, really gives it, I would like that to be a hexagon shape also, but the chances of me finding that would have been slim to none. <laughs> so here on this one, I'm going to use a different rub-on transfer, but I needed the back to be a little bit more solid. So I'm adding some more chalk paint and then... Those four little bumblebees that I cut out, I'm gonna put them on these four little spots. So I'm adding more paint so you can see the black 
transfer once I put it through. Now again, this came out okay. It, it transferred very easily. It's just, I think that it might be because they don't, they're kind of like, um, it's just a subtle type of ink, I guess, or transfer that, that this one is. But I, I still think that the idea is there. So you can see I put the four little bumblebees and then that honeycomb there. Now this is a, a transfer I got off of Amazon. And if you should choose that you want to, to use the same ones or buy the same ones, uh, it is available in my Amazon store, which is linked in the description and in the first comment below. Um, these are very nice transfers. They go down easy and smooth. They, they are very thick and almost as though they're painted on. They're very beautiful. And th these I absolutely love. I recommend them. They, they really add to the piece. Now see how pretty that is? We're going to just put some white flowers. And of course, bumblebees like flowers, so I'm putting flowers on there. And then also I wanted to add a bow, so here I'm going through my extras in my junk bucket. And then when I came across the Dollar Tree lace ribbon, I couldn't say no. So I had an extra piece. I just tied a, I guess, just a shoelace bow, like the way you tie your shoelaces. And then here, that is a little jar I got at Dollar Tree um, in the past. It had little bumblebees on it. So I took the charm off of the jar and I'm going to uh, attach it to this bow. Now at first I tried to just stick the ribbon through the charm, but I didn't like the way it looked, so I grabbed an extra piece of twine from my junk bucket. That's just jute twine. And then I looped my little extra piece of lace ribbon. It's a long piece of lace ribbon, and you'll see here, I just kind of looped it around my fingers until I had two, two loops. And then I kind of secured it a little bit, but I'm gonna take this twine, I'm gonna put our bumblebee charm on the twine, and then make sure that it's facing downwards as I put it face down on the table. And then I'll put my little loops of lace ribbon in between it and then use that twine to cinch it in the middle like we did on that previous bow. And it turns into a bow. It's so cute. Of course, I'm cutting the tails off of the twine. We don't want the tails to show. Um, and it's just a cute little ribbon bow with a little bumblebee charm in the middle of it. And I think it adds to the honeycomb because it's a very delicate honeycomb transfer there. And then with that little white flower, and of course I'm standing it up the way I plan on standing it uh, up on the table to make sure I've got things facing the proper way that I want it to. So it, it kind of hangs downward. And then I just put some hot glue on the back of it and attached it to the inside. And there's cubby number two done. Yeah, of course. Cool. And I forgot to glue that down. So there's me gluing that down. There you go, guys. <laughs> make sure the bee's facing the way that you want your project to face. So now for this one, I've got these little, I'm not sure what you call those, honey dipper sticks, the, the little cute honey sticks. I got those off of Amazon, also in my Amazon shop, should you want to. So I've got some Dollar Tree honeycomb ribbon, and then I've also got some crafts uh, or paper mart, uh, very thin, but it's a buffalo check. Um, and then I also have the little bumblebee that I cut out of the same transfers from Amazon. So I'm going to take the two ribbons and I'm just going to tie them around the uh, stem, not the stem, but the handle on our little honey... I don't know what those are called, guys. Honey dippers. <laughs> Sounds like I'm, I'm ordering, ordering an appetizer at Chili's or something. I'd like the These are my honey dippers. <laughs> honey dipper sticks. Anyways. So I'm tying the bow around. Like Again, we're just doing some simple shoelace bows. But then because that, that honeycomb ribbon is one-sided, you got to make sure that the proper side is showing when you're tying your bow. So I've kind of just had to mess with it a little bit just to get things to... to um, face the same way and then of course I do little diagonal cuts and I think that's all that's all I'm going to do to the actual honey the little the little stick there that little cute little stick um, we're going to just glue that down um, now I put that I just use regular hot glue on that because we've got some chalk paint behind there and of course I used uh, I glued the ribbon down as well so I'm not worried about that coming off I, I believe that that one should be fine and of course, worst case scenario, should it pop off, I've got all kinds of wood glue I can just pour in there. Here's a little bumblebee we're going to put. I wanted to put it flying downward. I just like putting things, you know, backwards. So that's, again, cute little bumblebee transfer came from the same pack from Amazon. So we're going to take a little bit of Spanish moss. I still have some left over from my last little Dollar Tree bag. Uh, but I did get a nice big bag from uh, Hobby Lobby. So, and again, way more affordable for the amount that you're getting. So I'm using my uh, silicone little tool there to press that, that Spanish moss into the back. And for now, that's what I did, but I do add some, some, some stuff to it later. Now let me tell you this. This is 
a styrofoam ball that I had cut the end off of and you'll see why because I used the other part of it for a, a craft that you'll see next in um, in order so I didn't really put these in order here but I'm gonna cover this little half styrofoam ball just take a styrofoam ball and cut it in half guys and now I'm gonna cover it with Spanish moss so we're gonna make it look like a cute little like a floor breaking like a little tiny floral dome so i had to find some flowers that were small enough so this is just a bundle of flowers from my stash um now i put one of the bigger ones on here but i'm going to be taking that off in a second because it just doesn't look uniform in my opinion so all i'm doing is taking the smaller flowers and i'm going to apply them around this little half dome pretty evenly uh, you'll see me take a couple off and reposition them but then also See, here's where I'm putting it. I'm like, you know, I don't like that big one. That one's a little bit too big, in my opinion. So I was like, let's uh, let's see exactly. Eh, let me take these off. Again, this is just the process of watching my mind work, you guys. And some, sometimes that's pretty scary. So just be careful. <laughs> so here you'll see me reposition a couple of different ones. And then I'm adding a little bit more of the Spanish moss on the side. So that any little bald spots you find, find something to fill them with. You'll be good to go. And then... I needed something, some greenery. So this is, I'm pulling the leaves off of a eucalyptus piece that I took off of a bundle. So there's the little pieces that you can pull off of a bundle. And then from that, I had already used the top part on a previous um, DIY. Again, this was in my junk bucket. And I'm just gonna take the little leaves and kind of glue them around the flowers. And this is exactly, I was so happy once I got the greenery on there that I was like, thank you. My other two ideas that were just total fails, I just look how cute it is. I'm, I'm very happy with it. It just it took me way too long to get to here but Super cute and then also I'm not done with that little this one right here. So I think you know, it just doesn't look Something's missing. So I grabbed a couple different little yellow picks from all my my floral stash These are leftovers from bundles that I couldn't even begin to tell you pretty sure this yellow one right here That came from from Hobby Lobby But in any event just find some little pieces some little bits and bobs from all your stash and all your different stems and literally cut them into a million pieces <laughs> So here you'll see I'm gonna zoom in to show you I am just gluing these in it's like it's almost like a floral, it's like a craft room collage. You're making a collage in every single one of these little cubbies. So take a theme and run with it and do what makes you happy because right now, after I added all these different yellows, so you got a darker yellow in the ribbon, a bright yellow right there that I'm putting in and kind of a muted pastel yellow underneath it. All the yellows right there, that, that set it off and that finished the piece for me. And I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. And I can tell you guys, for a minute there, I was super, upset that two of the ideas I had to put in there were just absolute fails but you know it happens to all of us and I think this is cute I love the way it looks I am more than over the moon happy with how it came out you guys let me know what you think um and again these are these are available at Michael's over up by the register in little dollar bins I've seen these shapes they've got squares and rectangles and circles and these hexagons and I've seen them up there for years so it's something that they carry most of the time you should be able to get your hands on a few of these should you choose to want to try to recreate something like this so use the inspiration and let me know how it goes guys this was super fun love it you guys let me know in the comments what you think so much fun so cute again it was a bit challenging but it was fun all right so the next one we're gonna make some some beehives now i've got six uh six bundles of eight foot rope nautical rope and then i've got a dollar tree metal bucket you get those in the craft section and then i've got one of these uh, plastic cloches it says high cloche dome um, I have been racking my brain what to do with these. I've seen people do all kinds of things with them. So that one's this metal vase. And anyway, so those are the uh, jute, sorry, not jute, but um, the nautical ropes from their Dollar Tree. So these are all Dollar Tree items. I'm going to take the twine off of the metal bucket and we're going to save that. Of course we save it. Even if we weren't going to use it, we're going to save it. And I'm going to take the nautical rope and I am going to just apply this to the side of the bucket in a circular fashion. We're just going to glue it down on the sides and we're gonna just, we're not taking it apart. Now for the little plastic one there, we're gonna unravel, I think one rope, we don't even use one of them or two of them. But for this one, I believe we used about four. Um, yeah, we used about four rope, four eight foot 
pieces of rope so you're going to want to buy a decent amount just to make sure you, you have enough now i already have this in my stash because i am ridiculous when it came to buying this stuff i kind of like the dollar tree rope because it's a softer not the rope is not it says nautical rope on it but it's a softer rope other ropes i've bought from the hardware stores are found on Amazon. They're more of a sisal. They're harder and a little bit more like coarser. So I just like using this one. Now the Dollar Tree rope um, is a bit fuzzy, but we're going to, we're going to fix that. So once you get to the top of your bucket, we need to uh, apply the glue to the rope itself because we're going to build the top of the beehive. Um, now this is where I got the styrofoam piece that you guys, I used in that one little cubby on my little hexagon, my little honeycomb table display. So here I'm just applying the glue to the top of the rope. We're, we're building this up from the, the bottom of the, or yeah, basically the bottom of the bucket is the top of our piece. So we're building it up on itself. And here's the styrofoam ball. So that's just a, a styrofoam ball from my stash. And I cut it not really in half, but I'm using a little bit bigger piece on this the little bit bigger side on this top piece here and this is to help support the rope i uh, don't necessarily glue it to the styrofoam but this gives the rope something to lean against um there's some of the glue did make it on there but i didn't specifically make sure i applied the rope to the styrofoam but it's there in case i needed it kind of thing so not to worry that you know the top of the piece is going to be hollow because we we need it to be uh it's it's supposed to be I don't know, pyramid shaped. We want this to come to a a point at the top. And here's an extra piece of rope I had from an older project. And I'm just going to apply this on either side. And we're going to make this into kind of like a little handle at the top. I've seen a lot of people do lots of different things at the top. So for the larger one here, I'm going to add it like it's a cute little hand, handle or a hanger. You know, the, like it would be hanging from the tree that the bees decided to make it on. Again, we're making everything uh, <clears throat> in the expectation that this actually occurred in nature and then it decided to fall into our laps so that we can place it in our homes so literally just keep applying it in the same circle and then cut your piece off and tuck it in the middle eventually it will naturally come to a point where you will have to cut your rope and just tuck that in to where the handle is and then you have a very cute little beehive look how cute it is it's not even done so I had never done this before so right here I'm showing you I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna use um, my lighter to burn off all the little fuzzies now I've never done that before so of course I went outside just to make sure I didn't start a freaking house fire but I had nothing to worry about so also it was very windy outside at my house so it took me a while to get it done but um, here I'm applying, applying just another piece of rope to do the little opening to the beehive um, because we're gonna paint that inside black. But then here I'll show you with the lighter. If you've never done it, there's nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't, I, I mean, I'm, 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 you put fire on something, that's basically how you start a fire, correct? So now for this one and my smaller beehive, I did them here at my uh, workstation, but nothing to worry about. And here I'm just taking some black acrylic paint, pick a brand, pick a, pick some paint. You could use chalk paint, doesn't matter, just paint it black. Uh, Sharpie and markers weren't gonna work. I've seen that before, that just the, the rope wasn't absorbing it. So I kind of just realized I can really soak this with some paint just to get all of the creases done, to get it through all those little nooks and crannies. And it looks so cute. I mean, and for a mile, it's like, I still can't believe I'm making this. Look how cute it is. I did not expect it to turn out as well as it did. So I, I want to say that these are probably my favorite part of this particular v DIY video. Um, and then here, any little spaces you have and like any little pieces that weren't really all that cute where the two, you know, where you started a new rope because your, your other rope ran out. I'm just adding black to it. And then I'm also going to add some antique wax here to give it some brown, not too much dark black on there, but I'm adding some brown spots. I think it makes it look weathered. I think it makes it look more realistic. And again, this is obviously a a rope bucket made into a beehive style look go with what makes your heart happy um that's just what i did so while those while the paint was drying on all that we're gonna start our smaller one different shape but the uh, beehive idea still comes through so this is just showing you smaller options or different options now again this is where i was saying we're going to take one of the ropes but we're going to unravel it so you're going to get three strands out of one rope so here i've already separated it 
and we're just going to start applying it in the same way that we did the larger one. Now this one was a little bit more difficult because even though you, when you unravel that rope, the little pieces that you've unraveled, unravel themselves. So I had to keep twisting it. This one was annoying. I don't know what that I would use the Dollar Tree rope to unravel it again because I had to keep twisting it together and or like right now adding glue and using my silicone little spatula there to just kind of make sure that it kind of sticks to itself. Now I am super happy with the end result. These two girls right here are my favorites. I absolutely love them. But I can tell you it was tedious to get that stuff to stick together and not like separate. There was like big chunks missing and I'm like eh. Again, you, you might see me here, but I kind of cut most of it out. It's just keep twisting and twisting. But I was just getting a nice, tight little coil around that cloche there. And um, again, the hot glue sticks to the plastic. The rope sticks to the hot glue, and you're good to go. So once you get to the top of the dome, this one's a little bit more time sensitive because you have to really hold that down. The way the, the plastic is curved, your rope wants to slide everywhere when you're putting it down. But again, just with a little bit of time, put on some music, do something, and just keep twisting. Now you have to pay attention because, I mean, you guys, I burnt my finger so many times, but if you've been here for a while, you guys know that's just part of my ammo. And also, if you're a fellow crafter, you already know, yeah, our, our fingerprints are gone, guys. We're like, we're the perfect accomplices. We have no fingerprints. <laughs> so this, I'm just working it around to the top until I get to a very, very small little spot here. It's I can still tell you, even though this, this rope was annoying, I might use this, a different twine or a different rope, something from somewhere else, not this nautical rope for the Dollar Tree. It was very annoying because you can see I had to keep twisting it. But once you get to a spot that is just small enough, I, for this one, instead of putting a little hanger on there with another piece of rope, um, what I chose to do was use a little, I guess it's a finial cap. We'll see. I got these off of Amazon. A uh, wood dowel cap is what it says. So it's like a little finial top. You can get them also at Walmart. They look very similar uh, in the craft section. But I got those off of Amazon uh, fairly cheap. I got them a while ago. But they are in my store. I'm just applying hot glue to the middle of it. Because we're taking wood to plastic, we should be fine. It wasn't wood on wood. So I cut a decent amount of piece off of the end of my rope. And I took a guess here. And I just nestled it and you know got it tucked in snug around that finial cap. And then that's it. I love the way that little that little uh, finial cap looks. It little, looks super cute. So here I'm showing you, now that I'm not scared, <laughs> I'm just uh, gonna burn off all the little fuzzies. And I'm telling you that, guys, that makes such a difference. And also it smells good. It smells like a, a camp camp out in my, in my craft room. My husband came in, he goes, that smells good, what is it? I'm like, burning rope. <laughs> Don't worry, just starting a small house fire. No, be responsible, guys. Be careful. Make sure you don't do anything that would make you uncomfortable, which is why I went outside for the first one. So here we're going to make the opening on this little guy here. But that is the jute twine that I took off of the larger bucket, um, the one right to the left that we made the larger beehive out of. That came off of the tops of the metal, the top of that metal bucket from Dollar Tree. So again, it's already coming to you in into use. So I'm making this one more oval because we have a taller, thinner beehive, but do whatever makes your heart happy, you know, whatever makes your eyes happy. You'll, you'll know when you hit that sweet spot, it's when things start looking really great and they make you happy. That's when you're going to get to where you want to be in your, in your project. So we're doing the same thing again. We're going to take that craft paint. I'm going to just apply it down in the middle and we're going to basically get that in every little crease and crevice and make sure that our cute little opening is all filled in and then also with the extra on my paintbrush and a little bit kind of on the side we'll do the same thing we're going to put some highlights in areas if, if there's anything that's kind of looks like a, a hiccup it's not very smooth so I'm just adding pieces and then just getting all kinds of crazy and just adding it to it now I'll take my antique wax and in, in a moment and once I start applying the antique wax um, I'm going to put it all over that unfinished wooden finial cap and then kind of wipe that down with my tool. So basically I stained it and it looks super cute. It, it, it ties it all together. So now I'm adding my little brown spots and then here we've got two completed. Look how cute it is. I'm telling you, burning the little fuzzies off really made the project look so much more finished, so much more high end. I mean, these are solid little pieces too, guys. They're not going to fall apart. They got a good weight to them and by themselves like that, tie a bow on it and you're done. 
I went kind of over the top, but you guys already know that about me. That's kind of my, uh, it's kind of my thing. So here we're going to put a bow on the larger one. Now I may have, I, I'm going to show you the process. I cut a decent amount out, but it also, I made a bow as though I was going to, I made the bow too big. So you'll see here, I'm, I'm just taking a bow and pinching it in the middle. I'm dovetailing the ends. And um, this right here is honeycomb ribbon I got at Michael's. And it wasn't on sale, so I paid way too much for it. But it's so cute, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, um, so I made the bow too big. I went and got some zip ties because I needed something to secure the middle. And I didn't want to use pipe cleaner. I needed something that was going to be harder... Um, a, th a thicker plastic in order to stick that into the little grooves that I'd already glued together on the top of the beehive. So we're cinching our bow in the middle and you're just going to see me here make a bow that's way too big. It covers up way too much of the top of the piece. I still wanted to add some flowers to it or some little, you know, just little extra pieces here and there that you cut off of, you know, leftovers from your stash. And this bow is just way too big. I'll sh you guys will see here that as soon as I hold it up to the piece and I was like trying to find different spots, like I could, but I didn't want to put the bow on the back of it because the ribbon is part of the design, you know? So I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I made the bow too big. So I'm going to cut my zip tie off and I'm just going to do literally two pieces are basically just straight pieces of the fancy ribbon. So I've got my design ribbons in there that make me happy. And I'm just going to pinch in the middle. This is the easiest way to do it. Now this dollar tree, that's a dollar tree buffalo check ribbon. And that one I'm actually going to kind of just make a, a loopy bow. So I'm going to pinch four loops in, in between my fingers, add it to the tops of my strips there, and then zip tie it in the middle. So there is no actual tying of any bows. It's just basically uh, arranging these loops and strips of, of ribbon. And then there I've, I've got, okay, much, much better. I've got the pieces I want, but I'm going to, of course, add so much more to it. <laughs> so much more. That's kind of my thing, right, guys? Sometimes a little bit too much. So glad that I made that smaller, though. It really fits the piece. So now these are pieces, again, of leftover. That's an actual bundle of little, you know, white, yellowy, papery type flowers. Uh, this is just a mixture of, do not Dollar Tree, uh, Michael's and hobby lobby bundles i've had in my stash for such a long time you can find similar things with spring you know spring and summer bundles but just find some some white flowers i was going with white and yellow um to me that's basically very summery very spring very bumblebee <laughs> so just dig some things out and basically when you look at them say you know how how much can i cut this apart and use these pieces because you noticed in the previous one, I've, I've cut some of these into smaller pieces and used them inside those little um, honeycomb little cubbies. So you'll see here, this is just a creation process of me literally cutting pieces apart on all these little things and just gluing them into the bow, gluing them into the top of the, of the, of the uh, beehive here. Just making myself a cute little florally ribbony bow topper collage I mean you could even do something where like you would do a lantern swag type style on the top and of course if you make even a bigger beehive than this a lantern swag would look awesome on the top of it so just different techniques to make things easier now I'm gluing uh, one of the little white flowers to the front bottom and then a little piece of greenery next to it because I felt that it was you know the items big enough I had the room to play with so I just I love how it turned out she's so cute so now on to our little second one here. Now, this is again me playing around. This is the creative creative process. I got a nice little cute mess here on the table, but in any event, I'm going to do a, a loop bow on this where I'm just gonna hold the loops in my hands and then we're going to use a zip tie to hold them together. So just place them in their loops and then I'm gonna get a zip tie. And they kind of come out from the zip tie after I already have the zip tie almost closed. And then you'll see how I fix it here. So if you, your bows, like your ribbon slips around on you, just kind of push it right through there again. And you'll know when you're making your bow, if you can see it, you want your loops on either side to be fairly, you know, proportionate. You want it to be somewhat even. Nothing here is going to be perfect. Nothing here is going to be measured. It's just all happy accidents. <laughs> the whole thing is one humongous happy accident. What do you guys think? <laughs> but whatever makes you happy. 
And again, this isn't like creating an arrangement, but in my opinion, when I'm adding all these little things to bows, this is also something that just makes me happy. I love doing this stuff. I love creating it. And when it starts coming together, you get that same excited feeling every time you place, you know, that stem in the styrofoam when you're making an arrangement. For me, it's like every time I get something tucked into that ribbon or tucked into that little bow at the top and it starts to come together, it's, you know, the excitement gets better and it just, you know, at that point you can't really talk to me. I'm not really looking or paying attention anyways. I'm just all about making it so cute. It's so cute. And you can see here, I'm cutting pieces apart. This one's obviously a smaller arrangement and I'm using, I think this is a painting tool. It's like a I don't know what you use it. I call it a dotter. It's like something you used to use dots. You dot on nail art with it. I'm using that as a, an apparatus to make sure things stick in there. So use a stick, an extra piece of dowel, a popsicle stick, a craft stick. Uh, you could use the plastic off of a piece of a stem from a from an un, you know from a piece of a, a trash that you would throw away from one of your bundles on your floral stems. Anything you can to get your fingers in there, just to make sure that that glue is getting. Um, getting on everything you want it to to hold down and here we're done this top I, I love these these turned out so much better than I thought they were I was really worried in the beginning that they were gonna look really bad and almost juvenile but they are so cute and I absolutely love them so for spring and summer even fall you could get away with that of course me I would put a pumpkin in there so I would definitely leave them out for fall <laughs> But you guys tell me what you think. They are absolutely my favorite. And all the the extra little pieces of, you know, you just blatantly just messily rub in some paint and get the shading on it. I love how they turned out. Now, a lot of people have done these and a lot of people have different techniques and they're all different shapes. Use all kinds of different containers. Just make sure that you can build up the top to a point and you've got yourself a beehive. Look how cute. Love it, you guys. I absolutely love it. And if you guys have any other ideas or other items that you've used or, or experiences you've had with making these, please leave those in the comments. I'm loving the fact that you guys are sharing so many ideas. And that's the best part about it is that basically we're all here to learn together and it's all inspiration. So take what I did here and run with it. If it, if it inspires you to do something, if it inspires you to, to, to just grab your stuff and get it all together and make something, then by all means do it. Because I had seen a few things, but I never knew that I was going to be able to do something like that. And these girls make me so happy to peek at them. I just love looking at them on the shelf. I love them. You guys tell me what you think. All right, guys, so last one here, this little hexagon piece of wood I got at Dollar Tree. We are going to put some antique wax all over this one. Now, we're not using rub-on transfer, so um, I can actually use the wax. I love the color of this antique wax. Every piece of raw wood I've ever put it on, it just looks gorgeous. I really do love it. Now, whether it's a Waverly antique wax that's so popular by everyone, or if it's just any other kind of wax that you've gotten, I actually just recently recently purchased a white wax. I can't wait to use it on a project, but this this antique wax is just so pretty. So I'm covering all of the corners. I mean, every side, both back and front, because this is also like another shelf sitter, but we've got a, the back and then the part where the little sticker was kind of was like icky, but we're gonna cover that here uh, with a little, um, see, this is Seasons of Joy 4x4 set that I got from Jennifer, I believe it's, uh, pa, I'm not, I don't know how to say her last name and I feel absolutely stupid when I do it every time, but she's the uh, famous Dollar Tree calendar artist. And so I could never get my hands on any of those. So I just went to her Etsy shop and I bought her art from her directly. And I got that cute little uh, Seasons of Joy. So check out her, um, her Etsy shop for, for the things you want. So if, again, if I can't find them and I want it, I will figure out how to get it. <laughs> so I just cut the little one out that says Save the Bees. It's super cute. It has a little bumblebee in the middle and very, very soft lines, but super cute. So with the wax on there, I'm going to use my scrapbook adhesive again. I just kind of roughed it up. I didn't concentrate on taking the wax out of it, but I did rough it up so that the you know, that, that adhesive does have something to stick to. 
Now, obviously we have different lines here, but I'm going to use my brayer to get a good uh, spot down. And that's that finger sander. Once again, works really good. Gives you a, a nice edge, not necessarily clean or too raw, but it's, it just works really good for, for this type of, you know, paper uh, removal. So here's the Dollar Tree ribbon that I've used before. It's a honeycomb ribbon. Now I was going to do a finger bow, but because it's one sided ribbon, uh, my brain could not figure out how to get that to face the right way. So I just tied a shoelace bow with my hands and, and just messed with and fussed, fussed with it until I got it, you know, the loops to the, the sizes I want until I made myself happy. Do the same as you please. And then now we're going to glue this bow down and we're going to do essentially sort of like a mini arrangement of what we did earlier. So here, actually that little piece right there is what I ended up using on that little small half circle in the... Uh, honeycomb shelf sitter but these little pieces here this is like an amazon uh, eucalyptus or boxwood bush that i grabbed online a while back and i love the way the greenery turns out it's a nice harder plastic so it stands up very well on its own and i just kind of am pulling all the little leaves apart i cut a piece off the end then i'm pulling the leaves off of that and i'm gluing things around so you're kind of turning your bow into your own little arrangement and i love doing this i'll just literally clip things into small little pieces and tuck them usually around the middle and then underneath the loops so it looks like basically your arrangement and your items are coming out from under the bow. I'm using the bow like you would use styrofoam and I'm turning my bow into its own little floral piece and that's kind of the fun of it too. These little tiny pieces here and there you find where you're going to tuck them where their new homes are going to be and then it starts to come alive. So again just cut little pieces off, cut the flower buds off, cut leaves apart, rip things apart, and then just start tucking them in. And that's it. See, the problem is um, also here I forgot, oh, you know, Whitney, you didn't farmhouse it. <laughs> Don't forget to farmhouse it, guys, which in my opinion is add uh, some white chalk paint and dry brush it all around the edges. Highlight the edges, highlight any little raised pieces here. I love the way it looks right here when I'm putting it on the, the side so you can see how it hits the corners of everything. Now it's done. Now I'm happy. Now my farmhouse heart is at peace. <laughs> so this one turned out really, really well too. And again, see, look, I'm doing it at the end here. It's not like it's going to ruin anything. It's just, you know, this is fun. It's crafting. Don't be afraid. If you forget a step, there's always a way to go back, usually. Now, if it had been black paint, that might have been a little bit more difficult. So I just would have chose white to begin with. But I love how it turns out. There's soft, subtle colors it's just very soft and very very pretty to me very feminine very little you know little bee themed things i love all of it and i don't usually i don't have any bee decor in my home at all i just wanted to do this since everybody everybody's it's, it's the season for beads bees and wreaths and lemons and all kinds of stuff and sunflowers and i've got lemons and sunflowers planned guys so you will see videos a lemon video and a sunflower video so get ready <laughs> But there's the set, guys. There's how it all turned out. I am in love with these beehives. You guys tell me what you think. And uh, again, if you've done any of things, anything like this, and you've got ideas or in, you know experiences you've had, please put those in the comments. I love when you guys share with us. And it's just you learn something new every day from everybody. Use the inspiration. Run with it. Show me and tell me what you guys would have done. I almost wanted to add turquoise into it. But I just, I went ahead and kept it yellow, black, and white. But you guys tell me what you think. So again, guys, thank you so much. Once again, you guys come through for me on every video. Your support and your comments are so, just, they're just greatly appreciated. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate you. There just isn't a possible way for me to, to actually put it into words. So thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me each week, every time I'm uploading a video. And um, I appreciate everything. I appreciate every single one of you. So thanks again. Uh, I have many videos planned. We're going to keep at this. I'm kind of doing a semi-regular thing. We'll see how it goes. But um, thank you so much, guys. Just thank you. So many hugs. Happy crafting. And I'll see you in the next video. So bye-bye for now.